just for so you know that uh, teachers from TCV schools, I I have some posters that you can bring back to your school. I don't have a ton, but I have 19, so I have to leave some here. But you can also take some to your school. Okay. Um, let's let's do a checklist first while we're still waiting for some people. Um, does everybody have a copy of feelings and needs like this? Raise your hand if you don't have it. You do? You don't? So come and get it in front. Come and get it. So actually the goal would be for everybody to have a poster of feelings and needs. One copy of the thermometer. I think I forgot to ask extra photocopies for this. And so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to take our temperature and you're going to use your cards afterwards, your feelings and needs. So we sit comfortably, two feet on the floor, and we're going to take three deep breaths and we're going to go see inside ourselves how we're feeling right now. Are we in the volcano, high energy, emotion, a little bit in the volcano, but still able to concentrate and focus? Or the iceberg, low energy emotion, a little bit in the iceberg, or the calm alert zone? So here we go, three deep breaths. Okay, have you found your temperature? So raise your hand if you're in the iceberg. Yeah. Uh, raise your hand if you're a little bit in the iceberg, but in the calm alert zone also. Okay. Raise your hand if you're in the volcano. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, raise your hand if you're a little bit in the volcano. Yeah. Good. And who's in the calm alert zone today? So there's some hands missing. <laughs> um, when we do this with a class, it's really nice to see which students are in calm alert because they also have a calming effect on the group. So this, you can take the temperature individually but it's also a class tool because when the class is not listening or paying attention, you go, okay, everybody, we're going to take the class temperature right now. And I think the class is in the volcano. So you can do it as a group and try to find a strategy to regulate the class together with the children. So now we've taken our temperature. I want you to put your cards down in front of you. First of all, see how you're feeling right now and put the feelings down in front of you on the table. So always feelings first. And there could be one, there could be many. There's no limit, really. <clears throat> so for those who just came in, take your, the time to take three deep breaths on your own. Go take your temperature and then put your feelings on the table. Show us how you're feeling. Well, show. You, you, you don't have to show, but it's nice to see. So if you found your feelings, now you can connect it to a need. So add a need to that. So if it's a positive emotion, excited, happy, what need is being met? Are you learning something? You need to learn uh, to play, to discover something new. So put those needs with the feelings. If it's a more negative feeling, then what need is not met? Uh, I'm confused. I need to understand. <laughs> When, when you've done connecting your feeling to your needs, I want you to turn them around so when I walk, I can see them. So if you don't mind turning it towards the outside of the table. Okay. So, so now we're going through the practice of emotional literacy. This is what we call the daily practice. This is something we have to do often. First step. Awareness of the emotion, volcano, iceberg, calm alert zone. Second step, 
naming feelings with the card, connecting to needs. And the third step would be to regulate all of this. So when you found out your feeling and your needs, already you've done some regulation. You should feel a bit, huh. Does, uh, did anybody feel like this? <sighs> yeah, understand better what's going on. Did that work for you? Yeah, because it looks like a lot of things happening at the same time. So now we're getting clarity and insight into what's going on inside of us. It's like going through a map. Next thing is we're going to regulate by adding an exercise to this. And today we're going to do again a mindfulness practice. But before we do the mindfulness practice, as teacher, I call this taking a, a snapshot of the class. So we do this with children. And then the teacher walks around, I walk around, and I see really quickly what's going on. And I don't even have to ask the story. One thing about needs, when we're going to talk about it uh, this after, uh, not this afternoon, but a bit later, the need for safety is different than the other. All the other needs we all have, and they're all equally important. But when you see the need for safety come up onto a table, we need to take action. That means there's something happening to that student. Either they're not emotionally safe or they're not physically safe. And this is a red light. And later I'm going to explain to you the lesson we do with that. Not today. But just know that this need for safety, emotional and physical, overrules the other. So when somebody has this need, that need is more important than my need for respect right now. So that could be a bullying situation. It could be all kinds of things. So long story short, you have a snapshot in a very time efficient manner of your student's state of mind. So I want you to take a walk around the table and look what you see everywhere. So pretend that this is our class and I want you to stand up and go and look around at what you're seeing on the tables. Okay, so, um, so what did you think about this? Well, what what did you learn? Well, what's is something surprising? Is you have any comments on this exercise? Any comments? Uh, I can understand that the everybody have a different feelings. I can. That's all. And different feelings, uh, this is what happens in your class also at, a, at the same time. All these feelings, they're, they're not just all happy at the same time, all sad at the same time. It, and it moves and it changes. Any other comment? Yeah? One thing common to all is most of them are excited because it's the first class and they have they got lots of energy to learn something new. Many people are excited? Oh, that's great. Well, you see, as, as a teacher right now, if you're my class, I can read the emotional state. I can, it's, I can see what's going on in my class. And I can see who I would really want to talk to because I'm worried about them. And right now, I haven't even asked anybody their history. And we were talking with Vishnu. We're not therapists. We're not psychologists. We're going to come and fix people. But if you're aware that this child is always on the sad side, that things are hard, that they don't have friends, this will give you an idea of what's going on. And then you can start talking to this child or this student or this adult who was mentioning, yeah. You know, we need to take care of our colleagues also in our schools. So this is a, a way to start caring and understanding what's happening in people's lives. Of course, sharing is always voluntary. And uh, we are, I'm saying again, we're not therapists and we're not here to do a psychoanalysis or psychotherapy. But in my school, when I do this exercise often, I know exactly who I should refer to a psychologist or who I should refer to a counselor. Okay, so this is how we use this material. Um, I wanted to add one thing. I'm still jet lagged, my brain is very slow. <laughs> Yes, okay. Well, I was only trying to say that I want to commend many of them. I want to congratulate them that they're open to putting it up on a table when somebody else will come and watch it. 
And I was making a funny comment on the side that if I had to do that in a hospital, I'll have to have a complete one-page informed consent form signed, declared, and all that. So great for them that they are actually, many of the tables had those rough feeling associations, feeling need associations, but they were open to presenting it to the group. Then that's to be congratulated. Yes, and that's wonderful. And also, we don't come doing this exercise from a, a therapeutic point of view, because of course, if you're seeing a, a therapist, uh, this is absolutely confidential. But the wonderful thing about this tool from NVC is if you've noticed, nobody had to tell their story. Uh, I've seen a lot of sadness. I'm sad, but I'm, I know something's going on, but I'm, I'm not going to ask the story right now. This is really up to the person. And the person will share only, or the, or the student will share when they feel safe. And to feel safe, you have to be, well, you have to feel that you are, you are heard. And not just heard like, oh, hello, how are you? And then you heard from the emotional point of view. And this is what we're going to practice today. We're going to practice active listening. Okay. So any other questions? It's good. So I think we're going to, oh. Uh, I saw uh, many of the confusion, you know, um, as a teacher, you know, uh, we can reflect our children. So when we teach once, you know, the children may have a lot of confusions. Now, for example, the, tem the temperature scale that we are using, uh, I personally feel that still we have got some confusion, right? That might be not very clear. So. Uh, can you explain us, as if we do not know, we are learning from the first, right, once or, tr I mean, just once or twice. That would be, because if you, you know, made a mistake from the very beginning, then the, completely you may go in a, another track. So this is what I feel, I, because I've seen many confusion. That could be one reason. Thank you. Uh, no, you're, thank you for this comment, and it's really important. And uh, I have a lot of teachers also who say, look, look, I'm not getting this right now. This is not making sense. Uh, some people get it like this. So we have to find a way to help you understand how you're going to go and connect to what's going on inside of you. Maybe you don't like the thermometer, but right now, if you're going inside of you to trying to get into this quiet space, what's happening inside? Like right now, I know my heart is pounding really fast. I'm still in the volcano. I'm not regulated yet because I'm still tired and no, no, no. So I, I can connect as we speak. I know what's happening inside of me. So the image of volcano and iceberg works for a lot of people. It doesn't work for everybody. So it's about finding a physiological response inside yourself of what's happening of your, with your emotions. Uh, emotions, we feel them, like, there's three levels. Physiological, inside, you know, tight hands, heart pounding, feeling oh, nauseous. This is the physiological. Cognitive, yeah, then the cognitive. Uh, my thoughts, will it, oh wow, I'm feeling angry. And then they will get into an action after that, okay? So how do I develop the awareness of what's happening inside of me? Thermometer is very useful, but if it doesn't work for you, try to go and see what's happening inside yourself. Is it moving? Is it not moving? Anyway, you have to reflect. When you find what works, come and see me. Uh, but the other thing is confusion could be about many things today, <laughs> and maybe not just the thermometer. So raise your hand if you're confused about the thermometer still. Is good? Raise your hand if you're confused about something else. Okay. So, shall we... Let's go through the confusion first. And you know what? Confusion is great. I love confusion. That means something's happening. We're trying to find something. We're trying to learn something. Often, as uh, I would try to figure... This is personal. Often, when I try to process my emotion, my, my feeling, and I try to identify what is in the root of it, that is where the confusion sometimes arises. And it, it has to do with how old that, how long lived that feeling has been. The longer that I have that experience and I have not processed it all that while. So if I have had some feeling for one year, but because of my steady flow of life or other things, I've not been able to look back deeply into it. When I later approach it, the need will not surface immediately. It will not be accessible easily. 
And that's what I refer to when I choose confuse in, in the place of a need. It's not the system of thermometer. That's very clear how thermometer works. And, and thank you for this comment because feelings and needs are a bit like, I call them onions, and they have layers. <laughs> and it's absolutely true because when we don't pay attention to our emotional uh, life or our emotional states, we bury it, and then it's very hard to dig it up or understand it. So this is what His Holiness calls emotional hygiene. You know, we brush our teeth every day. Well, we should have an inner check every day. This is why it's called a daily practice. This is emotional hygiene. So I don't let things linger. I don't let things get buried down. I don't ignore them. I try to face and find healthy strategies to deal with them. Okay. And any other types of confusions? Okay, maybe later. So can we do the uh, five minute of mindfulness practice? We, we stretched it because we had a conversation, but normally, you know, uh, thermometer, feeling, needs, and then energy shifting, we do a practice of some kind. It could be mindfulness, it could be yoga stretch, it could be many things, but I think for, uh, for teachers, I really strongly recommend that you develop this kind of practice. Uh, mindfulness is really beneficial for you. Some <laughs> Ah, Kabri Kabri, Los Gila Kabri Kabri Nandi. Nimato Nandi Uro Los Trilly Nimato was you, eh? Los, Los. Sir, yes, yes. Maybe I saw your face. You doing Dili. My dear Nimato Gumjib Dingi, the Shandon, it is Mandro Yuri, Muniling. The Sir Shandon, the Tomundua, it's Chipper Yuri. Also, and the Niger, and the Chida. Tadari Midam Sondre Nachita Namasamahagure, Gum Jamni Niva Twinding in Tindia Mare, Gum Jamni Yamu in Tindia Mare, Diana and Susu, Mother Nimato, the cupboard of the church she good doa. And she went to Jan, that Susu Sembatis, Lola Pavic, Nimarilla, this is Chiure, that the Gum Munichi in the Minti, Kohoyure, in that she sembled Lola Pavilla, Pentotestis, you do it ngi Ani Tango, the Mudan, the Samata, Lee Namang Chi Duns, Taku Chichi, no Duny, or to say. Ani Chitan Namji Gum Tel Jongi, and any cooks is at it is in Twaj in Yayur. Cook the artist Twaj Chi, and those two and a Zubu, the Kaltita Tala property, Zubu, the Ude, the education machine, Gum Jangila, Kartil and Zubu Madeo, there's lady in some of the tea chin rojak, teach you. And this book up to induce there, and it's all lumber. Lobber the Warren Nazi Lagum Jangina, the one does chin in Chengo on the long jet to the Oyore. And then Salazing into the party induced the integrity. A Garcilana, the Chengo or the Tower to the Ina, and the Mugba de Lamson Leung, Mugba and Shibachi. That can see called Gumla, Nobaching in the Shawa, the Goba, the Mugba, Shamuile. That Goba de Sojigre, and the Shawa lay the Sojigre. To see when the Mugba de change in the Shawa de Tang. Then do you go to the Gala Chedan Gumjaela? Young Sam Kurang Kurla taste this Hagu, Kajilan, and as a Gumja Ladigana Karichi Yure, sit on the cheer, the numbers of Hagu. And then to go to Dumbagu Puguchi, Pugitis with Tanzi Jelang as a Kalikaziji Kahudu. Then the Gumjan the same things in Chigu use and Tili Kalikari. And so same the Karilla Pijayurana, Namji, Lanchi Numbala Pijayur. 
Same the <laughs> Tilly, <laughs> 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 Tom 
Kode winani lamsa ngatsi samba tete kanda ya ala endi tsi doa gi moshuru doa ala samba ya ala tete le doa, tete le doa ngat te ngi ala samba te ma nen tu wi omo roa tsi eta tsi eta ni ngatsi amso te ni kafia na tsi Nima That wound is sad because it turned out to be a thing that I need to do to the community. Or that is under the tongue of the yellow swine. And you need to embark on your own. You need to do it. 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 You need Yes. 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 Of course. If you are sitting in a college hostel and and there is a lot of noise there, but you have a room to yourself and the noise is outside and you have relative control over that, in the sense that nobody will break into your room and you can have your space. And if you are in a similar place anywhere else, that there is noise, but It's in relative control. It won't completely be unbearable, such as a loudspeaker passing by you or a truck or something that becomes impossible. But if you are in a relatively controlled place, what is the thing to do is to be aware of that noise, but don't say that it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's there, let it be. Okay, I'm aware of it. And then come back slowly to your breathing, and then go outward again and come back again. This is what we do, and uh, that's what is mindfulness. Anyway. So you start with your breathing. If a noise comes in and it has kind of stopped your track of meditation, just go over, be aware of the noise. And like, like we choose in a wardrobe, you know, in our cupboard we have a wardrobe, so many clothes are there. So, okay, this is there, this is there, I'm aware of that. But you're not sticking to anything. So you are aware of that noise, it's, it's occurring, but at the same time, you try to position yourself on the breath, which is something which is constant. It won't be basic at any time. It will be there as long as we are. We're aware of everything else, but we're still focusing on our breath. That's the best strategy to take. No good, no bad to anything. So sometimes when you're trying to meditate, you have pain in one part of your body. So what to do now? It's obstructing. So I keep saying, okay, like, that's the noise there. So it's there, but it's not good or bad. It would be a good thing if you started right here. So I'm stuck in there. That's what I'm thinking here. And then, that's it, I'm going. ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それで、ま、それ
Thank you very much. So you, you're all very lucky to study here because you can have access to a very skilled teacher and you can develop a, a very good, solid practice and you should really take advantage of this. Uh, once again, I mentioned it yesterday, but it, we're not teaching our students and children to meditate. We, we, we may call it meditation, but we're engaging in self-regulation exercise, breathing exercise. We're not going to teach them analytical meditation. It, it's dangerous. There, there are some types of uh, forms of meditation that are not appropriate for young, young children or especially teenagers. But everybody can do a breathing practice, a regulation practice, and even mindfulness. So, but you need to develop a good practice for yourself. So, okay, Is good. So I'm I'm gonna start right away with something fun. Okay, so we talked about the three poison yesterday. Who was it? Was it you? Yeah, three poison. So I thought, okay, I tried to say put. You know, put this on the side for now, and you know, this is different. You're gonna find that they, they, these two ways of seeing things meet at some point. And I thought I didn't do a very good job explaining that, so I called Jinpa. So we're very lucky. Jinpa is just one phone call away. So I thought I, I spoke to Jinpa, and he, he gave me a fantastic answer. So what he was telling me, which I could not really explain, is that uh, when it comes to Buddhist psychology the three poisons uh, and afflictions, destructive emotions, um, yong mong? Yeah, yong mong. Uh, these uh, come from a point of view of morality and especially attainment of nirvana. It's, it's a spiritual practice. And when it comes to morality and ethics, of course we're gonna go, this is right, this is wrong, this is virtuous, non-virtuous. What we're doing with social emotional learning is coming from the Western uh, psychology point of view, and the point of view is that of well-being. Okay, so we don't talk, we don't judge about emotions in social emotional learning or Western psychology because there is no morality. It's purely from the point of well-being and uh, mental hygiene and so forth, mental illness. Well, that's for the uh, practitioners. So. The perspective we're taking it is purely that, and we do not judge the emotion, we don't categorize them as negative or positive, well, in, in the sense that uh, we would in Buddhist psychology, because this ethical dimension is not there. We're just looking at what's happening in the realm of emotion, and how can we manage them, how can we manage our behavior, because it affects our behavior, and how we can uh, make sure that the students become more and more literate. So, does that make sense? Yes? Okay, so I, I was really happy about that because... So these questions are really important. So if you have more, just bring them, uh, bring them on. I think for you to appropriate what is social emotional learning, it's important that, that you go through this. And when I don't do a good job, I just call Jinpa. And then <laughs> I'm gonna try to get him, actually. He's coming on the 7th. And we're going to try to get him to talk to you for one hour to close uh, this workshop. So as, uh, at that moment, especially if you have more questions, that will be the time for that. Okay? Sometimes, ma'am, in, ch uh, in small children, uh, say grades second, third, so you'd say K1, is it K, K1, K2. Um, this came up in a discussion with one of our, agenda, uh, one of our participants, the teacher who asked you that question. So it was about, if you were to ask a child to imagine a flower, imagine which one is a flower? The flower? Yes, the flower that he loves the most, or that is most uh, 
liked by that child and stay focused on that and then breathe. Would it be as good enough? Uh, as an energy shifting exercise? Uh, yeah, and, and generally, would, would it be like comparable to this activity that would be done with, uh, like you said, the ability to so. So, so if we were to imagine a flower, right? Mm -hmm. And absolutely, uh, we do have, right now we've done uh, some mindfulness together because that belongs to your practice. Uh, but for for students, we work with visual, visualization. Sorry, I'm thinking in French. Visualization. Um, <laughs> so we we do have some forms of exercise like this, and we have one which is really nice. That it's called a secret garden, where we're trying to go inside to find a safe place inside ourselves. Uh, so we imagine, and we do that for a few minutes. Like close your eyes, take three deep breaths, step into your garden, and go and explore what's there. Find a nice little quiet spot and rest for, take three deep breaths. So this, this is a kind of visualization we can do. Uh, imagine something that makes you happy, uh, things like that. One again, once again, we need to be careful about also triggering some images. Some, we, we're going to talk about the more psychological and the places where there's an ethical uh, line that we should not cross and when things happen such as I was in my secret garden and there were bombs exploding everywhere and everything caught fire. <laughs> so that didn't work well with that, uh, that student. I had to have a discussion and we, we had to change the exercise for, for that student. Okay, so... Was this after the Paris attacks? Hmm? Any time near that? Sorry? Was this after the Paris attacks? Uh, well, it, it, there, uh, there, I think this was... It, it was around there, but there's something in the news that affected, you know, that, that, that child, it was quite small, so we like, okay, but we had a long talk, and Tara, uh, Tara, my colleague, she, she's a, a school psychologist, so she's always on hand. Uh, we, when we bring social emotional learning, this, we're going to talk about that in the, in the next few days, but we need to have a support system in the school also, because if some difficult emotions are triggered, we can't just leave the students like this after so how do we support them and who's the counselor uh, all of this we're going to talk about that but not today okay all right so for today yesterday i'm going to do a very quick recap oh we lost oh perfect thank you and uh, sorry i made a mistake i got the french one again <laughs> so but it's it, it's the same thing so we talked about the observation observation the fact that this is very hard it's a high form of intelligence. We need to practice observation. We're not used to it. So observation is what I see or what I hear or what I say without adding what I'm thinking about it. When I add what I think and what I feel, that's an interpretation or a judgment. So observation is like a film. And that's the, that's the activity we do with students. We, I, I buy some paper cups, and I cut the bottom, and I say, this is your HD camera, high definition, and you put it here, and we're going to film something, and now what did you film, and repeat your observation. So this is great fun, and it's quite challenging. We, we team the children in groups of four, and they have to role play something, a conflict, a situation. The rest of the class is filming, and then we ask the student, okay, what did you film? Well, she was mean. Oh, is that, <laughs> is mean? An observation or an interpretation? interpretation? Interpretation, exactly. So this is how we practice with, the, with children. Uh, feelings and needs. Now you know about it. Just what, just what that Tris Freud means happy. Uh, on the top, uh, first row, Tris Freud means happy, and this one said like that. Actually, this is the very old prototype that we used 10 years ago. So the top is the thermometer. Without, and this was very confusing for, for teachers and <laughs> everybody. Nobody really got that. So that's when we added the volcano and the iceberg. On the left, it means très froid, very cold. On the right, très chaud, very hot. And calma left, which is the same. So the, the, we were using this material first. So you have to take your temperature and then do the four steps of NBC. We, we used to do it quite a lot. In our school, we left that model on the side because the children became so fluent that they didn't really need it. They, they internalized it. So, so the four steps. First, observation. 
then how am I feeling? And then what's my need? And the last one, request. We didn't speak too much about it. This is the part where I take my legs and I do something about my need. And needs, we, we said there were core human values, most of them. Some are not, like shelter, water, these are survival needs. But friendship, love, kindness, peace, safety, these are universal values, we all have them. And when we connect our need, our feeling to our need, then that guides us into our action. And that I find is quite Buddhist for me, because that sets my intention. I understand my feeling, angry, I need respect, and what am I going to do about it? So the request is where I do something, and I, so it could be asking someone, it could be asking myself for something. Okay, I'm feeling angry, I need respect. Sophie, would you be willing to get out of the volcano first before you do something silly? That's a request to myself. And the request goes, would you be willing? Because with young students, I always say this is the magic question, and I tell you why it's magic. Because if the person says yes, it's great, and if the person says no, it's great too. So, I'm angry, I need respect. Uh, Vishnu, would you be willing to talk about what happened at recess today? Yes. Good. Great. Um, if he had said no, let's say, let's try it again. Okay, I'm angry. I, and first I had reg uh, regulated. <coughs> I'm in my giraffe mode. I'm angry. I need respect. I take my legs. Would you be willing to talk about what happened at recess? No. Okay, my jackal starts to go up again, so I back off. I regulate again. I go, okay, he's not ready. I tried, he's not ready. So my need for respect will have to wait. And I'm going to go play with other people. And maybe I'll try again later. You think he will be able to talk to me at some point? Yes. Okay, good. So you see, this is the sequence. Needs belong to us, I'm in charge of them. Yes, people around me trigger all kinds of things, emotions, and, and then some needs are not met. But then ultimately, I'm in charge of what's going on inside, and I'm in charge of regulating, and I'm in charge of doing something about it, taking my legs. And if people say yes to my request, fantastic. If they say no, fantastic. I'll do something else. But if I'm making a demand, I want you to be my friend again. And now I, I won't take a no for an answer. This is not a request, that's a demand. And what happens when somebody makes a demand on us is we shut down, like, no way, I'm not talking to you. And you know right away, because we feel like, oh, I don't, want, I don't want to talk to her, I don't want to talk to him. It's asking me to do something I don't want, okay? So this is the difference between a request and a demand, right? So what we're gonna do, um, anybody knows what time it is? When is tea break? I don't wanna... Okay, we still have some time. Now this is gonna be a personal practice. This is your own personal practice. We're gonna do what we call at school a disappointment note. So this we, we give to students when there's a conflict, when there's something that, that's not going right. We ask them to fill a form. It is called a disappointment note. And what it does, it goes through all these four steps. And you write it down, I'll show you what it looks like. So, and this disappointment note is in giraffe language. So it's not in jackal. So it's an I statement. The first part is the observation. And we always write, I choose to address a conflict because sometimes in the school, kids will go, oh, she was mean to me. And it's like, no, this is, we're not, um, Tell, I think you say in English. You know when I'm trying to uh, tell that, oh, they're all wrong, they're all wrong. When you want to do conflict resolution, this has to come from a genuine motivation. Okay? So, first part, for or about? For Vishnu. <laughs> because something happened yesterday at recess. And I'm going to write the observation. When you say or do, and that has to be an observation, and it's quite short. So when you play football with all your friends, that's my observation. 
I feel lonely and I need inclusion. Would you be willing to let me play with you? Now, that's a disappointment note in giraffe language. When you are mean to me and ignore me in the schoolyard, is that an observation? No, I'm, so as, as a teacher I would say to the student, yeah, we're not quite there on the observation. And then I help write it properly. Uh, you know, I feel that you are mean to me. That's not giraffe. And I need you to let me play. There's a you in it. Again, I'm accusing, I'm, I'm wanting the outside to fix me. And would you be willing to never do this again? That's more a demand than a request. So you see the difference. So what you're going to do is you're going to do a note for yourself. I want you to think about a situation that is uncomfortable or not fun that's happened to you, a real situation. If you really don't have one, you can make one up. Please don't choose something very difficult. If something is happening in your life that is very, very painful right now, this is not the right time to do it. But I would be very happy to talk to you after if you want to try to use these tools to, to understand your situation. But right now, I'm just for the sake of, because we're a lot of people, and I can't just drop everybody because I'm gonna be very worried if somebody gets uh, distressed. Choose something simple. Could be as simple as trying to buy something and you, the shopkeeper forgot to give you the money back and you forgot something, I don't know, something that is annoying. So, something simple, not a very deep, personal, difficult situation. Okay, is that good? So first, you write down for or about and think about your observation. If you have trouble finding the observation, just ask me, I'm gonna come and help you try to pinpoint it, okay? So observation first. So once you found your observation, use your cards for the feelings and put them down. Go see how you're feeling you know, because of that situation. And then take your needs cards and connect your feelings to your needs. Sorry, the last line that says from, this is where you sign your name. <laughs> so in the class, because we want to know who wrote the note. And, and by the way, just very quickly, these notes in the, in the class setup are all confidential. We're putting them in a peace box and only adults have access to them. Okay, this is not something that we uh, send around the class. This is very confidential. That's why right now it's a personal exercise for you. Okay, is, uh, is everybody finished? Raise your hand if you're not done. Okay, so everybody's done. Uh, requests are quite hard. I don't know if you've noticed. It's not that simple. We go quickly into a demand, and we're very quick to say what we don't like. I want you to stop. I want you to do this like this. I don't want you to do this. This goes into our teaching when we address behavior problem with children. We most of the time, 99% say what we don't want. Stop this, do that. And we never say what we want, because a request is actually asking what I want. This is also connecting to positive discipline. <laughs> okay, this is a lot of things at the same time. So just to recap, this exercise was a personal one. You went through the four steps of NDC. This is an exercise in self-empathy or self-compassion, because I'm paying attention to what's going on inside myself. When we get good at this, we can apply the same thing to others. I'm observing you, I'm, I think you may be feeling like this. I, I can't know someone's feelings, but I can go fish. Are you feeling angry? No, are you feeling worried? So I can go fishing. Until the person confirms, yes, I'm angry. I mean, I can't do anything. I can go inside the person, so I can go fishing. Do you need a bit of space? No. Uh, do you need some time? I can go fishing for needs. So I'm trying to understand I'm having empathy for the other person. 
Okay? So this exercise was personal. After the tea break, we're going to do active listening. We're going to apply this to other person, another one. And what you just did for yourself, this is how we also intervene in front of behavior problems. Not for myself, but well, actually, sometimes I'm dealing with difficult situation, and I know I'm maybe not in my best state to address a difficult situation at school. I will have to do this process really quickly with myself so I can be grounded and regulated before I start addressing the problem and intervening with the children. So this is the black belt of emotional understanding, management, and you need to apply this model to yourself first. So all that we're doing today is practice for yourself. I will not ever tell you, go do this and teach this to the children right now or students. You're not ready, but this is the practice. This is how it looks. This is what you're going to do for yourself. This is what you're going to do with others. And this is what I do when I mediate and I have two people in front of me and I have to mediate for them. This is what I do when I mediate a whole class circle that's gone through a conflict. It's always the same process. Okay? Any questions? Is it time for tea? But self empathy, we could argue self compassion exercise we've done. And I know this might sound strange uh, coming from the Tibetan background, self-empathy, self-compassion. Uh, do you know the story that His Holiness in the 70s went to the United States and then somebody told him that actually in the States a lot of people don't like themselves and he started laughing saying that's impossible. You know, this precious human life is something that is very present in, in uh, the Tibetan uh, culture. Whereas in the West, um, not liking yourself is actually more a part of the culture. So always finding flaws and being harsh towards ourselves. So this model of self-compassion is very important because I think even for Tibetans, when we understand how compassion and empathy feels for ourselves, when we develop these tools, this is the me domain, we're able then after that to go into the you domain with it. So it's very important that we keep this practice. And also it helps clarify the map of mind. You can understand better what's going on for you. It helps you regulate. When you do this type of exercise, we're talking about this, it trains attention also because this whole thing about being able, to, when you're a learner, when you're a student, you want to set goals and achieve them. If you can't regulate and understand what's going on inside of you, it's going to be hard. You know, I'm doing something new, this is challenging, I'm learning something, I failed my exam, well, I'm going to lose it. No, I can say, okay, I'm feeling so worried now, I'm upset, <sighs> I need help, I'm going to go see my teacher. Okay, and then, yes, I'm going to do it again, no problem, I can do this. I'm setting my goals, I want to achieve it, so it supports also academic learning. Okay, the second part of the exercise we're going to do is do a little bit of active listening. So active listening is actually having empathy for the other person by trying to go fish their feelings and needs. Okay, so I want you to pair, in, pair up in teams of two. And uh, how long do we have now? So I think we'll, we'll do I would like to do take take a long time so that we take our time doing this. Maybe 20 minutes each person in the team. Think about, again, a situation that is difficult for you, uncomfortable, not something that is very problematic, not, not a very difficult situation in your life. You can use the same situation maybe that you've worked with, but I've seen some, uh, if it's too simple and it's going to take two minutes, it's not going to be fun. So try to really think about something that's been bothering you. It could have been like a few years ago even. But think about something that's annoying or uncomfortable or that you would like to understand better. So, and you, we're going to exchange uh, one after each other. So let's say if I'm with Dejana um, and I'm telling you my story. Okay. What can I? Oh, actually, 
I really had a hard time this year. This is a true story. I'm not going to go into details, but um, my work was really hard this year at school because we we really went through a, a difficult situation and some teachers left. So I can start like this. And really, it wasn't easy this fall in my school. We, we lost teachers. So I want to understand why I'm still worried about this. So I'm going to tell you my story. And as I tell you my story, you're going to try to track my feelings and needs. So don't tell the whole story and speak for 20 minutes because then the poor person won't be able to catch up with you. So the person who's actively listening has to stop you once in a while. Marshall Rosenberg always said, after 40 words, I got enough. <laughs> and then I do feelings and needs. So, you know, it's not too long. Wait, wait, let me see if I heard you right. Are you feeling still upset? And I want you to work with your cards or you can actually maybe use this because we have less feelings and needs. You still have the basic emotions here. It'll be faster. So the gent can say, hmm, are you still worried? And I'm going to say, oh, yeah. And then she's going to try to help me find my need. And if it's not the right, we're fishing, okay? So no right and wrong answer because that belongs to the person. So if I say, no, I'm not worried. So then you have to help me find out which one it is. So what you're doing when you're doing this, you're paying attention to the feelings and needs of the person in front of you. You're not thinking about you. You're just focusing on what's going on in front of you. You're very present to that person, their feelings and their needs. And this is also a, a, a tool that you will use in conflict resolution. So developing this kind of active listening, this is what we use when we do an intervention behavior problem. Uh, this is what we do with colleagues. When I see that uh, one of my teacher is not doing well, <laughs> I'm going to go and give, we call this giving empathy, giving compassion, being present to their feelings and needs and helping them clarify. Is it clear? Yeah? So we're pretty much going to take 20 to 25 minutes per person to do this and practice. And I'm going to go around. If you need help, just call me. Uh, if you want to spread out and go over there, I think we can do that also. I'm just going to walk around. And if there's something that you're not sure about, just call me. That good? OK. So there you go. And we call this the uh, giraffe ears. So everybody put your giraffe ears on and go and give empathy to someone. If you want to just uh, spread around, uh, find a team of two. And you know what? Uh, try not to team up with your best friend. <laughs> yeah, I saw you. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, uh, team up with someone that you don't really know. Because this is what we're asking from our students. And we're the first one to be bad models of that. So again, I've asked everybody not to work with a very difficult situation. But if something happens, if somebody goes into a space where they get really triggered by some strong emotions, please come and get me right away. Okay? And again, this is not, this is really, this is a personal exercise for you adults as teachers. It's uh, not for children. 